Hey guys, my name is Kurt Chan, Technical Evangelist at Autodesk, and today I want to walk you through a couple of tips and tricks in using CAM for Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing is working with the setup. I'm going to come over here to the very top on the ribbon toolbar and click Setup. Now if you notice right away, the Setup dialog box, box pops up in the far right hand corner. What I like to do is just drag it all the way over and have it snap right into where my, my browser is, just so as I'm working back and forth, I can you know, have everything all on the one, one side of the screen. So what I want to do is, you notice that right away when I click Setup, it encompasses, encompasses the entire assembly. So if I only want to machine just that rocker arm, what I'm going to do is just select under Model, select the, where it says Nothing, and go in and pick what I want to machine, which is the rocker arm. So the nice thing now is I can designate specific pieces, but, but what's kind of cool is that if I have multi-bodies or, or, or multiple pieces I want to machine all together, I can start going through and picking up other pieces to work with. So this is this is a new feature that we've added to specifically work with multi-bodies, but I just wanted to point this out to you. So if I go in and just X this out and come back over and I want to just, just machine just the rocker arm. So there we go. Another thing too is just, just a refresher is working with the triad specifically. So I always want the Z axis to be pointing downward. So how do I want to orientate this? And I want it in the in the far upper right hand corner for, for the work coordinate system. So here is just picking stock point, coming right over and picking up that, that back right hand corner in how I have it in, in, in relationship. Now I'm going to say I want the Z axis always to be pointing upward. So what I'm going to do is if I pick the stem of the arrow, now pick a face that I want it to be perpendicular to, which is maybe that top face, it's now going to orientate it perpendicular to that face. If I click the head of the arrow, like for example the for the for the green arrow, it's going to flip the direction of it for me. So just giving you an idea of, of how I want that to be orientated specifically. And then of course I can come back over to my, my stock. Once again we have fixed size as well as relative, relative size. Fixed once again is designating, let's say I have a piece of stock that's two by two by two. I can just type those values in. Or for example, relative meaning that, well let me say for the top offset I want to be, you know, half an inch tall. And then for the side offset, I don't want any side offset whatsoever. So just to give you an idea of what those mean once again. The next piece I want to kind of show you is, is now uh, working with templates. And I think this is really key because uh, it actually can speed up a lot of time. So for example, if, if I want to set up a specific template in working with like the chamfer mill or a chamfer tool, what I want to do is come over here and I already have it set up and, and activating a chamfer tool, you have to have a 2D contour or, or go through the 2D contour operation. So if I edit this 2D contour that I have here, you can see that right away when I pick a chamfer tool, let's go and fire this guy right up, pick a chamfer, chamfer tool, select, and right away under passes, it activates the, the chamfer operation. Now what I've done too is I've actually done a tip offset because I never want to machine with the, with the tip of the tool. I'm having it offset a little bit further down. But every time I you know, maybe set up specific parameters or, or change the fees and speeds or the, um, you know, say for, for linking, you know, how do I want to uh, allow rapid retraction, all these certain parameters I want to go through and reset up every time, but I'm going to use that same tool. So what we can do is set up a template. Now how this works is once I have everything specifically set up, if I right click on the operation, come all the way down to where it says stores template, what I can now do is I'm going to go and save this template somewhere. I'm going to call this chamfer tool. And let's say I picked a half an inch chamfer mill. Now what I'm gonna do is save this guy off in a folder, okay? Oh, of course, I can't work with this guy at the very top. I'm gonna delete that, just type an inch and save it off. So how do I apply that now? Okay, so let's say for example, I have my other setup and what I wanna do is apply that chamfer now to another setup, right? or recall that, that same operation. So what I can do is if I right click on this setup, I can come all the way down to where it says now, right here, I'm gonna do a, 
create from template. Now from the create from template, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, that template that I have, go ahead and open it up. And now if I look at this guy right here, under the setup, I have that 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 operation or that template imported right into the setup, but I have the, the red hazard sign. So what this tells me is if I edit it, I have to now designate under geometry what I want it to be applied to. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this edge, but what you'll notice though, if I go to my passes tab, everything is remembered there. All my feeds and speed, all my operations, all my custom setups are all remembered within that template. The only thing I have to do is just pick the right piece of geometry I want to apply it to. So this can really speed up the process, especially when you're working with, let's say specific configurations you want to work with of tools you get from certain vendors or feeds and speeds, instead of redoing it every time, set up a template and then from there you can just apply it to, to whatever piece of geometry you want to work with. Find that really key. Another thing I find great too is is you know working with A360 and even looking at the some of the the information that's viewed there, viewed there. So once again to access A360 to collaborate, what you want to do is come all the way to the very top to where it says Open Data Panel, which looks like a kind of like a checkered box at the very top left. Click on that and then come over here to the triangle. And once I click on that, it brings me now to A360 to where it shows me uh, all the projects or all the files that are within that project. And now the nice thing is that if I actually click on the physical, let's say for example, a physical part here to bring up the viewer, what happens is that now I have the opportunity to actually under the viewer not only look at not only look at just the part and move it around, but if I have any type of um, cam toolpaths applied, I can actually look at all the toolpaths in the viewer. So this is great like if I'm, if I'm on like uh, my phone or, or an iPad or anything along that way to access my dashboard, I can actually preview all the operations that I've set up in the viewer for, for this part, as well as all the feeds and speeds and the tooling information. So this is just a great way to kind of communicate if you're at a comp job site or if you want to communicate to you know a vendor and they're in that project working with you, they can actually look at all the things you've done, not only from, from just the part standpoint, but now the manufacturing standpoint of what you've, you've done to try to machine this part. So let's dig a little bit further now too on the simulation side. Hop right back over to Fusion. Uh, so with, with simulation, I, I find this probably the, the, best, the best feature, one of the really coolest features, is if I go and do a stock simulation right off the bat, and I have it all set up. I like to work with tail once again, because I think all toolpath gets a little bit too busy with tail. It's just going to tail through the operation as I'm going through. But one thing that's actually cool, if I go and hit play, one thing that we've done is, number one, we've actually incorporated something called the position bar. At the very bottom here, it's like a green timeline you can kind of see. But what you'll also see too is kind of increments is that I kind of hover over, which goes through the entire time lapse, the entire time lapse of the of this simulation. So telling me tool number three, uh, half inch flat end mill. Uh, it's this, this setup. This is the machine time at this point. But you see all these kind of red ticks. And this is actually really important because as I'm moving through and I hit a red tick, what it's showing me is it says, hey, the holder collides with the stock at this time. So this is a great way to kind of take a look at exactly what's, what's going on, what the issues are, and seeing if your holder collides with the stock or even at this earlier point here, you can have a red tick of, you know, maybe a rapid collision with the stock of the tool, as you can see right here. So I find this this just, you know, some, some great things to kind of keep in mind as you go through and you work inside of Cam for Fusion 360, some great little tips and tricks on, you know, hey, I can, you know, look at collisions now with the holder to the stock, some new cool things with A360, as well as um, you're looking at templates, which, which I find actually cool, and working with multi-bodies, you can select multiple things. So once again, thanks again, and hope this helped you out.